critical lack of planning on my part is I don't have anything to drive that nut with. Oh, or do I? That could be a lie. Is it going to fit inside one of these? No. No, of course, it's an, it's an intermediate size between those two. Which this might just be. Oh, you gotta be f fucking me. It's deep enough, but it's just not wide enough to capture that nut. Fuck! No way, this is the same size like my drill uses. This is a standard. No, it's not like standard. It probably is a standard size. It's probably metric, and all my shit is SAE. I don't know why the United States can't switch to metric. Like, for fuck's sake. It's so much easier to use. I don't have like a good nut driver. I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers like a Neanderthal. It doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm trying to find exactly the right tool for a job that's pretty simple. Uh, um, I'll just use these slightly oversized pliers that will nonetheless work. Just inelegant. Very inelegant. Yeah, but functional. I don't want to make this. That's probably fine. A few strands have kind of like left out the side and it's drawn the insulation in there, which is obviously not great. Yeah, this is suboptimal. Hmm. Quite suboptimal. Let me strip this a bit longer next time. By next time, I mean this time. So it gets like a full wrap around that post. Oh, God damn it. <sighs> so let me just do that so the strands don't come out. Wonderful. And that's the thing, I think just 14 gauge wire is also just too big for what I'm trying to do here with this small of... And, I mean, it, you could go larger washers, yeah, but then it would start getting a little comical in size. Such an awkward angle to do that at. There we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, there'd be a lot of metal sticking out here anyway. It's live, regardless of how I do this. So I guess that, that's that's fine. Yeah. Should I put like a little heat shrink around that? Should I put heat shrink? Yeah, I guess I should. You know what, just to be thorough. But then if I want to reconfigure this box, that's going to be a bitch to get off. That's one of my goals here, the reason for doing as little soldering as possible in case I want to just reconfigure any of these connections in the future or add something to this box. Hmm. Am I cool? You know what? Maybe just some electrical tape. 
Maybe just a quick, uh, nice turn of electrical tape. This is much easier to remove if I want to. And that's, that's fine. And then this can just go into the common neutral block. Wonderful. I think that's it for my neutrals, at least until I get to this end of things. Oh no, I need the neutral for this LED. Yar. These LEDs are going to be switchable on and off, but on the live, not the neutral. And the reason for them being switchable is if I'm trying to measure very accurately the load that's on this box by tapping a multimeter across those two tap points um, between these, the, you know, the banana sockets, I want to be able to shut off these LEDs, but otherwise I want them to be on if I want to just check if power is flowing through. That's the uh, whole objective behind this switch in the middle. Okay, so that's cool. Alrighty. I guess I'll put, while I'm doing yellow wire, I'll put a tail. Oh, that's interesting, actually. The wire that's going to come into this box is going to be like standard extension cord type wire. But it's going to be running through a grommet, through a gland on the box itself. This is just the cover. So I could bind these directly to these posts or to these sockets, for fuck's sake. But then if I take the lid off the box, it's going to be connected. So I think I'll go through a couple of uh, two-position Wago connectors for that. So yeah, I'm going to put little tails on those as well. Yeah, that is what I'm going to do. They could be pretty short, though. Well, I want them to be long enough to so the Wago connectors are sitting at the bottom of the box and not just, like, hanging from these things. So that should be adequate. Let me just fold this in half so I don't pull out any strands, hopefully. Nope. Wonderful. And then layer up one of these. There was a network error. How the fuck was there a network error? Why does why do these streams keep disconnecting?
Okay, well, anyway. I'm just going to carry on with this as a recorded thing. Because whatever. <sighs> anyway, so... Yeah, so this is, this is uploaded now as a recording because for some fucking reason my cable modem just crapped out. So I'm not live anymore. I could just switch it over to Fios, but then I would re have to restart the stream. It would show up as two separate streams on YouTube, which is kind of pointless because I already had that problem yesterday. I don't know if it's a time thing, like if I'm just getting a problem with my cable connection at exactly the same time, or what? Oh man, that's annoying. Alright, well... Like I said, this is more about getting footage for a edit edited video. can't say edited, or it sounds weird if I say edited. Even though I guess that's technically correct. So I just have to, like, think about that word before I pronounce it. Eh, I don't know. It's stupid. But, what can you do? But, now that I started live streaming, I mean, now that I live streamed the first couple of parts of assembling this thing, I feel like I'm still, you know, I'll upload this video, this particular video that you're watching right now, unedited, just to fit in with the whole live stream thing. Let's keep this connection away from that LED, though. Hold it down. Not that anyone's waited with <laughs> waiting with bated breath for this recording to come out, but uh, I don't know. I feel like I just owe it to myself at least to be consistent with this project. I mean, I've needed a new cable modem for a long time. What would happen is it would never actually stop working, you know, to stop tr uh, transiting packets at all. What it would do is every, well, over the course of, let's say, a week, it would get slower and slower and drop more and more packets till it would basically become unusable, but still be connected to the um, cable network upstream, you know, the cable provider. So, like, it worked, but it also didn't really work. Uh, it seemed to overheat, so I put a fan pointing at it. That didn't help. I mean, it cooled it down a little, but it didn't stop the problem from happening. So, I got one of those boxes that just resets the cable modem by power cycling it every 24 hours. And that works great, except it does interrupt my, inter my network connectivity once every 24 hours. Now, I have it set to do it at 6.30 in the morning. It's now 1.20 in the morning, so I don't think that box triggered. And the cable modem hasn't come back up yet, so clearly it's something with my provider. Um, I also have Fios, which is from Verizon. It's a telephone company here in the States. And it's like a fiber optic based um, distribution network. In some ways, far superior. It has symmetric speeds, first of all, so you get the same upstream and downstream. Um, or at least the business versions of their uh, services, which I have, are symmetric. And I use that Fios connection for more serious things. Like the cable connection is... The cable connection is my primary internet connection for, like, home use. For, you know, just whatever me and my wife do, like browsing the web, um, watching porn. Well, not so much my wife, but anyway watching uh, YouTube. Fuck, I'm like mangling this electrical tape. You know, all the usual home internet-y type stuff. It's like, it's the primary connection for that. The Fios is the primary connection for hosting things. But they can both fail over to each other. For hosting things, that's all automatic. For the home internet connection, I have to fail it over manually, which I could do right now, but like I said, still would have interrupted the streams. So, um, I'm not going to bother. Plus, I'm kind of curious to see how long it takes to come back up. I don't think this is my cable modem being funky in this case. I think it's their network. 
Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know what, as long as I'm now in the middle, let me do the terminals that will have ground. Now, ground is tricky. Ground I wouldn't want to have interrupted, even on my own device that I'm using, so... Because the problem with ground is, like, if the neutral were, neutral were lifted or the line were lifted, I would notice. Like, the LEDs wouldn't light, you know, no power would go through to the device that's connected to the box. That's one thing, but if the ground were lifted, I'd have no indication of that. So, the ground, I do want it to take a little more seriously, as one should with the uh, grounded conductor. Not sure how long I so I'm not going to use Wago terminals. I'll probably bunch these all together and solder them. So I want it to be... Do I want to do that, though? You know what I'm going to do? I am going to... The cables that are coming into both sides of the box, I'm going to solder those together along with one of these pieces of wire then that'll be it'll be Wago terminals for these two posts or these two sockets because those I'm probably not actually going to use really and when I do use them I'm going to check them for continuity to ground so yeah I think I'm okay with that so I will just apply tails to these a little on the longer side yeah like I said no real planning went into this it's just kind of like Whatever, man. Plus you get to see... Uh, fuck, that was a... Tonight's just not my night, I think. You know? You ever had one of those? Where just like... I started feeling like that at the end of the first stream, where I accidentally cut a hole way too large in the top of this box using hubris. As I was talking about the hubris, of not paying attention to what you're doing and going too fast at the end of a... Pr well, in that case, not the end of a project, but the end of a set of actions in a project. And I went and fucked it up, just like I was saying one shouldn't do. Kind of ironic, don't you think? Tight for my fat fingers in here. Come on. Er, mer, gird. Just stay. This is going to be sloppy. This is going to have conductors spewing out. I mean, strands spewing out from underneath here, isn't it? keep my fingers in there to keep the wire in position, which would be great if I had a proper nut driver, like a socket, instead of this damn wrench which takes up too much fucking space. Yeah, it's working out fine though. All my sockets are in the garage. It's like a garagey type item, I mean, I mainly use sockets on my cars. So, you know, it's like a sensible place to keep them. Alright, that's fine. We've got a good electrical connection, just with some strands poking out of the end there, but nothing our friend electrical tape won't cure. Alright. 
I don't know, I guess this isn't the most exciting video in the world. I wish I was like super cool and funny like other YouTubers. <sighs> oh, I'm also sort of like practicing at this like whole trying to live stream thing. I don't know that I've gotten any better at it. Like it's tough to fucking make conversation with absolutely no one. You know what I mean? See, that is the extent of my witty repartee. I cannot lift that up with my fingers. I can't lift it up with that. Do I have anything magnetized whatsoever? Oh, come on, you bitch. The problem is it's so tiny and so flat. You can't even get a fingernail underneath that. That's ridiculous. Oh, you can't even see what the fuck it is I'm doing. Not that with this wide camera angle you can, but... It's one of these little tabs. Whatever you want to call it. It's just, like so flat against the table. Oh, there we go. Nice. Whew. What a fun day. <laughs> it's supposed to be like 80 degrees here tomorrow. 80 degrees Fahrenheit. If it was 80 degrees Celsius, we would all probably die. And it would be more significant news than just me telling you right now. Um... Yeah, which isn't, like, ridiculous for mid-May. It's just, it hasn't got above maybe 70 this year yet. And the last few weeks have been cold and rainy most days. And then we've had a few nice ones in there. The reason I bring it up is because it's already hot down here. Because I turned off, at least, I mean... That loud noise in the background, that's all the servers behind me. I mention this almost every video because I know it's going to bother some people. It would bother me, honestly, if I was listening to this video. Well, no, it wouldn't bother me because I'm kind of used to that as background noise. Like, it's just kind of the background noise of my life at this point. Just computers and air conditioners humming away. So I find it kind of soothing. I mean, maybe you do too, and that's why you've watched this video for this long. I don't know. I am looking into noise cancelling devices ways of uh, just taking that out noise out digitally as well as building like a partition wall between me and the servers I've mentioned this before the reason I bring it up again just now is because to favor the quality of audio just ever so slightly I've turned off one of my air conditioners down here one of two and it is already getting kind of hot I'm already schwitzing a little which means that tomorrow when it's 80 degrees and, you know, for a large portion of the summer, because it does stay usually pretty warm in New York for quite a few months, both air conditioners are going to be working overtime. It's always bad news for the electric bill. But also bad news for me because they can't always keep up with it and it gets kind of warm down here. I mean, even in the dead of winter this year, because I went kind of overboard with the servers. Um, even in the dead of winter, I was running the air conditioners most of the time. At least I had them on circulating air. You know, if their thermostats kicked in, then they'd kick in, but they were on the whole time. Like, even when it was 20 degrees outside. Because at least even if the compressors don't kick on, at least just blowing their um, portable ACs, dual hose design, so at least when it's circulating air through the dual hoses, when it's like 20 degrees out, it does actually just exchange that... Well, I was going to say that coldness, that would be dumb. Exchange the heat with that much of a heat sink um, pretty effectively without having to kick the compressor on. So it's actually, it's fairly functional to just have one or both ACs running, even if they're not doing their thing with the compressor like ACs do. They're still useful. Um, but anyway, these have been, they've been running non-stop. And during the summer, their compressors run non-stop. And like I said, makes the... Oh, God, I'm not going to get this out of here. Makes the electric bill quite unpleasant.
But such is the way of things. Like I said, I just went overboard with all the servers. Why is the cable modem still not working? Are you, are you fucked? Like, uh, sorry, this is bugging me. Let me just, you can hear how it just got much louder. Um, yeah, that's because I just walked over by the servers. I'll be, I'll, I'll be away from them in a minute, Errol, in a second. I just gotta blindly plug that in. There we go. That's the whole reason I use this, uh, microphone. Because, uh, the closer something is to the source of sound, the louder it is relative to other sounds. Um, what is it called? The inverse square law? Well, anyway, basically, the closer you get to something, the louder it gets, but, like, exponentially. So, in theory, by having this microphone right near my fucking mouth, this can be a short one, um, you're hearing my voice significantly louder than you are the air conditioners and computers that are behind me. Which, you know, should improve the quality for you, but it doesn't completely solve the problem, as you can hear. And I hate it. Like I said, the ideal solution, well, there are two, the real ideal solution would be to take over another part of my house and either put the servers in that part of the house or put my recording studio, whatever you want to call this place, in that other part of the house. The problem is I have free reign over the basement, but not so much the rest of the house, if you know what I mean. And I tend to shoot these videos while my wife is sleeping because I'm a, more of a night owl than her anyway. Like, I'd be up, I'd be up now regardless of whether I was shooting a video or not, and she's been asleep for like the last hour and a half. So I can't exactly put the studio, if you want to call it that, upstairs, where the bedrooms are. And then downstairs we have a pretty open floor plan, so there's really nowhere to put it there either. The only separate room we have on the main floor is a guest room, and, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's pretty small, first of all, and second of all, I don't know that I'd convince, be able to convince her to give that up. For just, uh, you know, dumb YouTube purposes. So, my ideal solution is to then, therefore, build a partition wall down here that, while it might not be soundproof, it'll be sound dampening. Probably by a significant amount, though. But I don't want to do... Well, I've avoided doing that to date because of uh, cooling and air circulation issues. Because then it would just be all the servers basically in their own tiny little room behind me. And the two ACs would happen to be in that room that I would build. Like, it would just be a matter of building two walls. And I'd actually use probably two layers of acrylic with an air gap between them. Um, so that I can see the servers and not hear them, or not hear them as much. And they, you know, make a cool background for videos. Which, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's a cool background for videos. I don't know, especially with all the stupid purple lighting. Plus, I like to be able to just observe them to monitor them. Um, I have monitoring software, obviously, but, you know, sometimes just being able to see that they're on at a glance when I come down here, um, see any flashing lights on any of the discs that might need replacement that I didn't get an alert about. Just gives me peace of mind to actually be able to see it all. But anyway, by locking the air conditioners in the room with the servers, that means that the rest of the basement will not be air conditioned. And in the summer that could be an issue, so then I have to get another air conditioner or figure out some way to exchange the air between the server room and the rest of the basement while dampening sound and while filtering the air to keep dust out of the serve area, because dust is a problem down here. So it becomes a whole thing. And then I end up having a third air conditioner down here running, which uses more electricity, because I, you know, there's no real good way to exchange the air between the small serve room in here with, uh, you know, with sound dampening. 
well, an air filtration is easy enough, but like I would need some kind of elaborate muffler box and some very quiet fans to move the air. Anyway, it, it would just be physically large too, which is a main pro a major problem with it, with that idea. So it, it ends up being a whole faff. It's not just a matter of building a wall. Plus, I'd want the wall to be... I, I called it a partition wall before because I want it to be removable. So, that, like, um, if I really need to get deep access in there to move any large pieces of equipment, like ra whole racks or something in, it, in or out of that room, I could just remove the wall. Now I figure if I use acrylic panels... I mean, I'd use sheets of acrylic and I'd make panels out of them using wood and make them relatively lightweight and make a number of panels, like vertical panels that go floor to ceiling, but maybe three or four feet wide that attach together to form the wall and, you know, attach the floor and ceiling, but using some kind of temporary measure. So this way, I, you know, they might not be lightweight, but I could lift them myself and just like detach them with either a couple of small bolts, a few screws or whatever kind of methodology I use and then just, you know, temporarily get them out of the way if I need to. But designing and building that whole thing, like that's something I would plan, do, put more planning into than this box, for example. Because that would be way more expensive if I fuck it up. Because, I mean, large sheets of fairly thick acrylic made for this kind of purpose are not cheap. And I would probably use some kind of hardwood, which wouldn't be terribly cheap either. But this way I could use thinner lumber rather than, you know, if I did poplar or pine or something in order to retain stiffness and bear the weight of the acrylic sheets without anything sagging. I would need to go with larger dimensional lumber and that would just look ugly. So... Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it becomes a whole thing. Eventually, I'm going to do it, but for now, I've been ardently looking into noise reduction software that I can use live. Because usually, when I record a video down here. Um, I mean, this one is recorded, but I mean, if it's edited together, if I edit a video that was recorded with audio from down here, as opposed to like a voiceover thing, I will use fairly decent noise reduction from Audacity. And it differs from other types of noise reduction that it actually takes a sample of the background noise and then for better or worse, to better or worse quality, excludes that noise from the sample. And it's not always super great, but it's a hell of a lot better to listen to than the drone of the air conditioners and servers directly. It's a six position Wago term. Uh, the problem is I'm gonna need another position for this switch. Now that I think of it. And this is actually going to need to be a three position if I want to jumper the switch into there. Because uh, I don't have... Oh, that's a five position. Actually, do I have a six position? I thought that was a six position. So if I thought it was a six position, that might mean I had one and thought I grabbed that. And I just can't count. That is the problem. No, five is the biggest one I have. I have to double up a couple of conductors again. And I'll grab a couple of three positions to go with those switches. Fuck. I mean, I could jump her out of that five position to another, like, three position. I don't want to fill this entire box with Wago connectors. <sighs> I mean, I can, but... I'm not going to. So what I can do is um, maybe combine this thinner wire with this fatter wire. 
just re-strip them to get them extra tight to fit into the Wago connector's orifice. I mean, honestly, I could also, I mean, it's kind of a cheat, but I could chop a few strands off of here if it won't fit. Because again, this whole thing is going to have overcurrent protection at 3 amps. So I don't even need, you know, 14 gauge wire is definitely overkill. Now oh, they'll both fit in there. It's tight, but... Yeah, I'm really making the most out of this, uh, this connector here. Because i got to leave one terminal open for... Magic machine. Um, for the incoming power. Derp. Alright, so now I need a jumper to go from there to the switch. I'm going to zoom out, let you sort of get the context for a while. Don't know how useful that is, but uh, that should be a good length. And speed connector. And Wago connector. Nope, that's way too long stripping. And cut some of that off. Got overzealous. That should be fine. Oh wow, I've used all those. Yeah. Okay. I'm just muttering about how I'm probably going to run out of these connectors. Much to my chagrin. That's okay, I can use the non-insulated ones and then just uh, heat shrink around them or something. So, NBD. It's my fucking cable one, it's still not working. Damn. It's just a pain in the ass, because now I'm going to have to call a cable company and have them come out in the middle of virus times, which means you got to go through that whole awkward, like, oh, hey, how's it going, and then, like, not shaking hands and sort of staring at each other from six feet away while you're both wearing masks. It's all very... Not dehumanizing. It's impersonal, I guess, is what it is. Not that I'm a big, you know, social guy, but... It's just made all the more awkward when you can't actually see a person's mouth when they're talking or you know, shake their hand or get near, near them. Not so much that I want to be near them, it's just like the awkwardness of not knowing, oh, am I far enough away or is he far enough away, which should one of us move? It's like when you're at in a building, you know, in the hallway and you're walking towards each other, then you both go like this and you both go like this, then you both go like this and then you can finally go. It's kind of like that. It's like, oh, are we too close? No, no, you're, you're too you're too close. I'm too far. It's like this. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I find the whole social distancing distancing thing gets kind of awkward sometimes. Like with the Uber drivers and Grubhub people and stuff. Like I have a ring doorbell which will go off when it detects motion coming up my walkway to my front door. So I'll be at the ready when they arrive, like they'll be walking towards my front door, and I'll be walking towards my front door. But I know I don't want to like open the door and surprise them, and be like face to face with them, and then go, they go, oh my god, you're not social distancing, and I go, oh fuck me, you know, and you, now, now we're both uh, going to be in trouble by someone. Anyway, so I'll wait behind the front door, but like I don't want to be looking at, like we have a window on our front door, I don't want to be looking out the window weirdly at them, so I kind of have to like hide behind my front door, and wait till I think they're far enough away from me. I could check my ring doorbell thing, which, you know, is even weirder. It's like spy on them while I'm standing behind the door until they're far enough away. But I don't want them to get so far away that they get in their car, because I like to open the door, and as I grab the food, wave to them and say thank you, you know, show them that I appreciate the job they're doing in these, in these tough times. So it's like you have to wait for just that right distance where they're far enough away that they don't feel like you're going to infect them, but they're not so far that they're not going to hear you say thank you or, like, have stopped paying attention to you. I, I don't know. Is, is it just me? I'm like, I don't know. Virus times just brings out the social awkwardness in me. Uh, and I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yeah. Need another one of these little jumper leads with the connector on it to go into that Wago terminal. I'm trying to kind of regret not just, like, rampantly soldering all these 
it fucking splices together. Why is that, like, not extending to the end of it? So, yeah. Social distancing is weird. But necessary. Now, in case anyone was wondering, here in New York, I mean, I guess in the U.S., Amazon is still sold out of toilet paper. Would you believe it? Not every kind. Like, you can still get industrial, like, ass-scraping, like, ultra-violent toilet paper off Amazon. Um, not my preference, you know? And it just started kind of showing up back in stores where you can get it reliably. But it was, like, for two months... You really couldn't buy toilet paper, at least not easily. And you definitely wouldn't be able to like, get the brand or type that you prefer. It's fucking crazy. Like, it's the United States. Like, and it's not like you can blame anyone. I mean, you can blame, like, the people. But it's hard to blame all the people. Because here's the thing, I'm not, like, the panic hoarding type. Um, I didn't go out and hoard stuff as soon as virus times started hitting us. Although, uh, to be fair, <laughs> I was lucky in that I do a subscribe and save from Amazon where they send me items every month or every however often I want them. You can set that up, you know, at one month is kind of the minimum interval. And you can do every six months to down to every month. Anywho, um, where is this going to go? An Owego connector, so let's strip it that far down. Um, it just so happens that, like, I have toilet paper on my subscribe and save, because if you add enough items to the subscribe and save, you save 15% across all the items, which is pretty good. And I did do that. I do have that much on subscribe and save. So, um, what was my point? Fuck, my mind just started wandering. As I'm paying attention to stripping this wire, which, you know, shouldn't require 100% of my attention, but there you go. Um, I have toilet paper on my subscribe and save. So early, you know, in February's delivery, I meant to cancel the toilet paper because I already had too much. This was before virus times, before people re really started hoarding. And so I think, no, in my January delivery, um, I meant to cancel it because I had enough toilet paper, but I forgot to. Like, you can cancel just one, one or two items out of your entire delivery and still get the rest of it. So... Oh, I have a Wago terminal for this Wago connector. Man, I'm sorry, this, this story is really getting disrupted by my uh, sort of faffing about. I'm trying to make sure I'm connecting all this shit to the right place. Anyway, so in January I meant to cancel it, I didn't. I got more toilet paper and I order in bulk quantities. Like, I get a um, 24-pack. Or no, a 48 pack, two 24 packs. Um, not every month, I think every two. Anyway, the point is, I don't remember exactly what my delivery schedule was, but I was backed up on toilet paper, already had way too much because I had let a couple of deliveries just go right through. Got even more, so by the time they started saying on the news that toilet paper was being sold out, I had about 100 rolls in my house. But that's not due to hoarding. Like, that was all from pre-virus times ordering, and then the toilet paper crisis hit. So, you know, I'm not one of those assholes who went in and bought the entire store's worth of toilet paper to everyone else's detriment. Like, I bought a ton of toilet paper before I even knew this was going to be a thing. Which, you know, turned out to be really lucky timing for me. And so I haven't needed toilet paper since this all began. But, man, it's, uh... But... Anyway, the uh, point I was trying to make was that even though I'm not the hoarding type, like, next time virus times comes around, like, if we get a big uh, resurgence in the fall or late summer, which I think we will, um, I'm going to make sure I'm fucking stocked up on toilet paper. You know, like, I don't want to hoard, but the problem is everyone else is hoarding, which means I'm not going to be able to buy toilet paper because everyone else is doing that, so I have to do that in order to 
sort of keep parity, and it, it just becomes ridiculous. But it's not really anyone's fault, because here's the thing. The way the paper industry in the United States works, like I don't think we import much in the way of toilet paper because we have tons of trees and, and processing plants here. I'm sure we do import some toilet paper. But my understanding is we have enough processing capacity to, and manufacturing capacity to make enough toilet paper for the entire country, no problem. But it's sort of like a real-time supply. Like it's, you know, toilet paper usage is fairly regular. You know, aside from virus times, ordinarily there's no spikes in demand. People wipe their ass just as much on a Tuesday as they do on a Wednesday, on average. So the production capacity in the United States was just enough to keep up with demand, no more, no less. And because demand is so stable, they only have s factory capacity to keep up with that demand because there's no point in having extra capacity if demand's never going to go higher than whatever it is normally. You know, maybe they could, they could handle small spikes. I'm sure there's some times of the year where people wipe their asses more than others, but it, it's pretty consistent. So the problem is, even if everyone in America just goes out and buys twice as much toilet paper, like if the normal purchase is just one, like, let's say, eight pack or one 12 pack of toilet paper, if everyone in the United States who buys toilet paper went out and bought twice that amount, which wouldn't be a lot, you're talking like instead of one 12 pack, two 12 packs of toilet paper, it's not crazy. I buy them in 48 packs, so to me it, it's not absurd. Um, but that right away doubles the demand on, of toilet paper and therefore the factories can't keep up and you have a whole lag in the supply chain where it's just never going to catch up if keep people keep buying toilet paper. I'm guessing that when virus times is over and the supplies stabilize and availability of toilet paper stabilizes, people aren't going to be buying it because they're so stocked up on it already. But then again, people are preparing for the second wave, so I don't know, like I said, I'll make sure I'm stocked up. It, it's all a whole thing. But the point is, it's not like anyone's fault, per se, that we were running out of toilet paper. You know, because even a small increase in demand is going to cause a shortage. And this was a large increase in demand, so it caused a hell of a shortage. But that's just sort of the way it is. That's the way the paper industry works. So I don't think, you know, no one's, I don't think anyone's an asshole if they went out and bought some extra toilet paper because of the shortages. Like, they heard about shortages on the news. You can't blame them for wanting to make sure their family has enough toilet paper to wipe their asses. Um, you know, yeah, this, I mean, we all seen the memes and the jokes, like, oh, you can wipe your ass with a thousand things around your house. You know, you can wipe your ass with newspaper. You can wipe your ass with wrapping paper. You can wipe your ass with magazines. You can wipe your ass with leaves. It's like, yeah, we can do all those things. The reason we don't do them normally is because they're uncomfortable or inconvenient. So I can't really blame anyone for wanting toilet paper and not wanting to use leaves. You know what I mean? Like, I, I heard a YouTuber, I watched the YouTuber, rather, go on a whole rant about how it was someone who lived in, the, in a rural area was like, oh, city folk have no idea what they're doing. They're not prepared. They don't know that you can just use any old thing for toilet paper. I mean, yeah, you could even use your hand and then wash your hand extensively. I mean, sure. But, like, none of those solutions are as good as toilet paper. So if you can get toilet paper, why the fuck would you not use it? I mean, that's not like a city versus country thing. That's like a convenience versus annoyance thing. Now, anyway, in my opinion, and I am H.O., I'd rather use toilet paper than magazines. Plus, you can't flush magazines, so then you'll have to throw out all your, all your shit in the garbage, which people say, oh, it's no big deal. You know, you throw out a baby's shit in the garbage when it's in a diaper. It's like, yeah, I take gigantic shits, like, and then... I don't, don't want to get into it, but the point is, like, I don't want all that in my garbage. It's going to smell, then I have to take my garbage out, like, every time I take a crap, or every time my wife takes a crap, or bag it up separately, in which case I'm going through bags like nobody's business, which then there's going to be a bag shortage. Oh, fucking thing's stupid. I don't know. Oh god, I didn't tie this neutral wire into anything. I'm gonna double up all these connections. Madre de fuckos. So, anyway, I don't feel bad for using toilet paper, and I don't particularly vilify people who just, you know, bought a little bit of extra toilet paper. Because that's enough to help cause the shortage, but they're not assholes if they just bought a little bit more toilet paper than they normally do. Or normally would. 
Um, I blame the people, though, who were going to, like, I saw some YouTube videos some people were caught on camera and sort of accosted on camera, verbally accosted anyway, for buying, like, the entire store's worth of toilet paper and or paper towels. Now, those people are assholes. Like, unless they're donating it to, like, nursing homes or local fire departments or hospitals or some shit, you know, someplace that needs it, um, if they're just hoarding it for their own purposes, then those people are assholes. Like, I can't speak to the every single person every single one of those YouTube videos or every single person that bought out a store's worth of toilet paper. Um, but if they were doing it out of their own, for their own selfish needs, then they're just assholes. Like, they're just completely inconsiderate. Buying a little bit of extra toilet paper is just prudent when you hear there's a shortage, I think. Um, and I'm not even trying to defend myself because that's not even what I did. I, I haven't bought... Ah, uh, that's not true. I had bought one 12-pack of toilet paper because we were running, we were running a little low on our original supply. And I'm just afraid of running out, so I figured I'd just buy it as I need it now. Um, or a little before I need it, to be honest, but... Like, you know, I could have bought... The store had a decent quantity, like, I could have bought multiple packages. I only bought one package because I don't want to be that guy who's depriving other people of toilet paper. But at the same time, if there's another big rush on toilet paper, I don't want to be without it, because I don't particularly want to wipe my ass with a magazine, even though I can. Where are my snips? So anyway, that, that's my brief rant on the toilet paper situation around here. So, but yeah, I was, I was fairly lucky with the timing of the toilet paper shortage. And I mean, all the people I know who didn't stock up in advance like I did, I mean, I, I haven't heard personally of anyone wiping their ass with like leaves or magazines or anything. Oh my god, I fucked this up. Uh, um, you know, like, none of my friends or family have reported doing that. Maybe they're keeping it a secret because they're embarrassed. I don't think so, because we all talk pretty openly about any old thing. But, uh... I feel like I fucked something up here. I did fuck something up here. I 100% fucked something up here. Because this is supposed to be the neutral cutout. So the neutral wire needs to be wired to this LED. Via this switch. Right. So this wire actually needs to go either to the LED or the switch. Yeah. Uh-huh. I messed that up. Okay. This neutral wire can stay where it is. But this one... I mean, now I'm glad I did Wago connectors, because if I soldered this... If I soldered all these into one big bundle, I, mean, I guess I could have just chopped it out and then just did whatever, but... Oi. Pretty sure I was trying to make a broader point there when I was talking about toilet paper, but... That's where it wound up. If anyone remembers what point I was trying to make, um... Please comment on the video below, and I might not read it, but I might. I don't know. Okay, so I don't fuck this up. This does have to go into there. That's what I get for rambling about toilet paper. And then that can get doubled up. I, I'm totally out of shot, too. Wow. Uh, what even time is it? Two o'clock. You know what? I'm going to wa wrap up this stream. I'm going to wrap up this stream. It's not even a stream anymore, but it's kind of like a stream, because I started off by streaming. Um, I'm going to wrap up whatever the fuck it is I'm doing. And just, you know what, let me just get all these electrical connections done. There's only a couple more to go. It just seems a shame to stop now. When I'm so close. Oh my god. No, that... Oh, for fuck's sake. 
I'm like saying something and then doing exactly not what I'm saying. This has to go through that switch, which was the whole point of what I was just saying a minute ago with the neutral. The live on this side is the same way. Oh boy. Um, yeah. You know what? I, I'm going to wrap up this video. It's been... Well, actually, it's only been an hour and a half. I say only, but... Let me quit while I'm ahead here again. My cable modem's not working. I kind of have to figure that out. Yeah, all right. Well, if you stuck with me this far, I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, I hope I'll get all this unfucked and actually be streaming again shortly. Uh, keep an eye out. I, no promises on exactly when that's going to be. Uh, but based on the popularity of these videos so far, no one cares. Uh, which is actually a good thing, because this has been complete fuckery. I'm still going to leave these... Ugh, see, it's not going well. Um, I'm still going to leave these on YouTube publicly, just because... You know, why not? Um... My feeling always is, like, even if it's a shit video, if no one likes it, they don't have to watch it, and so no harm done. If they do like it, then they can watch it, and it's great. There's nothing bad about posting shitty videos, I think. Yeah, so I'm still going to post it. Anyway, that's all for now.